Canadian soldiers have been instrumental in training members of Ukraine's territorial defense forces. You're going to meet one of them now. She's from Labrador originally, but now she's the commanding officer of two combat engineer regiment at CFB Petawawa. She commanded Operation Unifier, though, in Ukraine from March to October of 2021. Lieutenant Colonel Melanie Lake, our guest, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good morning, Heather. Thank you for having me. Take me back to uh, the thinking at the time, if you would. What was Canada's mission and plan when it took on the role of training Ukraine's military? Canada was one of the fun first countries, actually, to answer the call. Um, we've been on the ground in Ukraine since 2015, and the mission started very much uh, after... Um, after the Maidan and the annexation of Crimea and the conflict erupted in the Donbass and the military in Ukraine had had been in progressive decline for many years and, and was largely in in shambles when when things happened in 2014. So we, uh, along with uh, the, our American partners, uh, UK and Lithuania primarily, um, but lots of other countries involved as well, um, went to help them train. Initially, we were focused at, at a fairly low level, so training battalions, uh, direct training, our instructors delivering weapons training and tactics. But over the years, the mission has, has evolved with the Ukrainian military. Um, we've gone from direct training of battalions to um, mentoring the instructors of their training institutions as they train brigades to get ready, and they focus on combined arms maneuver and a combined arms warfare and um, teaching them NATO decision making. By the time I was there at Roto 11, we really had two aims. Um, we were, well, three, I would say. We were uh, helping them on the path to NATO interoperability. So that is, that is making sure that we can fight alongside each other on the battlefield. So and everything from you know, making sure we can communicate, we use similar tactics, um, language, uh, procedures, but also how we, the mindset, how we plan, uh, how we communicate our orders, and the whole idea of mission command and decentralized decision making. So, so then, stop there if you would, Lieutenant Colonel, because uh, I, it's really interesting. I'm not stopping you because so it's not just, you know, how to use equipment, but then you're getting into leadership structure. And as you said, communication yeah. decentralized. As I understand it, before it was a very much top down Soviet style way of running a military and you sort of move them away in a different direction from that. So by the time that you left in October 21, how would you have assessed the state of Ukraine's forces? They... I would say that they were, you know, they were a, a combat-ready, battle-hardened army who has learned from eight years of experience in the Donbass, uh, the conflict in the east. They are an army that has very much embraced the idea of mission command, and and we're working really hard, you know, to um, to get that institutionalized throughout their force. This idea of leadership and empowering your subordinates and building a senior NCO corps. They were on a very, very solid path there. Um, and we and had now, a lot to learn from them. But now the solid path and now very much being put into use. So here we are on this day 15. Yeah. And as you watch, I'm sure as closely as anyone, what is happening in Ukraine right now, what is your reaction as you see the military that you help train in action. So, I mean, it's a whole range of emotions. I am incredibly proud of them seeing how they have risen, seeing how they are fearlessly resisting and fighting with such fierce determination, despite uh, the numbers and the equipment and the seemingly large overmatch that they were facing, but they are truly maximizing the war-winning value that comes out of, you know, having that fighting spirit and believing in your cause and determination to fight, knowing that your family and your friends are right behind you. So I'm immensely proud and inspired by them. It's hard not to be inspired watching, you know, everything from President Zelensky and those emotional addresses to parliaments around the world, seeing all of 
civil society and all of the population rise and support and do everything they can. Um, it's not just feeling, military pride, civilian pride no. is very strong too. But within that pride, do you see the Canadian training, your training coming into play directly, vividly? Yeah, I mean, we many people on our team are talking to friends on the ground right now. Um, one of my colleagues, one of my team members said he got a message from um, from a gentleman that he he worked with uh, during our tour who had been on the ground, who had been in the military in 2014 and then got out, became a policeman and he's rejoined the fight and he said, this is not the military that I joined uh, in 2014. The strategies, the tactics, they're so different. We are empowered, we are trusted and that makes all the difference because a lot of those capabilities that are helping them, you know, not only stay, but succeed in the fight right now, depend on that, depend on having trust in small tank hunting teams, going out with, um, with these anti-armor weapons that they've been, uh, that they've been given, um, and being able to fight where they need to, to have an impact, not being micromanaged and having to wait for very direct orders. Same thing with the decentralization of the Stinger missiles that are flowing in. Like that is really having an impact when you have those quick decisions being made on the ground. You've got senior NCOs who, my God, they have risen and are having a powerful impact in this fight. Can they win? Russia certainly cannot win. This is no, can the forces you help train win? They will resist indefinitely. It's so hard to say what the outcome of this of this will be. I mean, we're on day 15 and we've already seen a huge change in in Russian tactics um, from, you know, trying to do a bit of a claimingly a softer approach and just targeting military targets to now, you know, you're seeing horrific images coming out of places like Mariupol yesterday, but that just strengthens the will to fight. I, I believe very strongly in the Ukrainian forces. I have immense confidence in their ability to fight and resist, and they're being smart. They aren't doing, you know, any foolhardy offensive operations right now that will just see them lose forces and not gain terrain. They are playing this smart. Um, so I have immense confidence in them and I have immense confidence in the country to resist. I hope you'll come back on the program as we continue <laughs> to watch this unfold together. Really an important perspective. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel, for sharing that with Thank us you. today.